Thank you. Uh, wh who's winning the cowbell? We're keeping that. Oh, really? I want more cowbell. Anyway, <laughs> cool. Hi, I'm Carl. Um, I like you. You like me, probably. We're not dating. I'm married. Thank you. Um, this is not my deploy shirt. I just have deploy underwear. Um, so, <laughs> and I don't wear any. So yeah, uh, I'm not a cowboy. I'm a commando. Okay. So, cool. So a quick thank you. Just quickly want to thank my team for allowing me to be here. Um, they're keeping everything on fire and, well, <laughs> hopefully not, <laughs> steaming everything and so on. So we have quite a few slides to go through. I have 102 slides, I have 15 minutes. So I'm a fast talker. Um, we'll have a, yeah, you'll see now. Anyway, I have to thank my big bro, Bob. We had a fight last week about something dumb and I'm, uh, I'm really sorry. <laughs> He's also my boss. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> And then I love to thank you for my wife for allowing me to be here because today is my wedding anniversary. <laughs> and uh, sorry, Albert. Anyway, all right, cool. So here's the thing. This is a meme trigger warning, guys. Yella, thirty themes, ah, theme memes. That's what I want to call. Cool. So you and the boss go to a vendor meeting, right? Then the vendor says, "What have I told you, right?" You could have both speed and safety. The boss goes, what? They talk about DevOps. We have a big problem. In your heart, you think, yes, DevOps. <laughs> you say to the boss, mm. yeah, cool. Your boss says, right. Back at the office, they assemble the team. Everything is great. You get there, the ops team is busy, <laughs> right? <laughs> The devs are going, yeah. <laughs> you log on to Udemy, <laughs> read a bit of Reddit, and you find out that, man, oh man, you try the Docker out. <laughs> the boss finds out, all of a sudden you're promoted, <laughs> right? <laughs> Fail happens, containers everywhere. At the point where it gets too much for you, and then that's that. <laughs> cool. Then the ops team goes to some vendor WebEx call and they find out, <laughs> right? You're, you're sitting in your cube feeling very, very tender because you have imposter syndrome. You find out that they want to start testing. <sighs> testing and production. Tell me more. You say, to the others, listen, you don't do this while you're thinking this, right? You get a call, pager duty alerts you. Why? Because tonight we test in Pratt. You're thinking. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Going very well. Now I'm earning my badge. <laughs> cool. And then the dev says to you, <laughs> You're thinking. <laughs> yeah. Cool. I love that guy. Anyway, cool. So yeah, let's talk about this. Life is about... <laughs> sorry, American friends. So sorry. Choices. <laughs> we all have choices to make. Modern industries, yeah, right? We, some, some other people might refer to this if you go go there Sundays um, in this, right? So we, but we in IT know that for sure, everything is about choosing your own adventure. <laughs> Any adventure, right? <laughs> Any adventure. But we don't focus on these kinds of adventures, we focus on these kinds of adventures, right? So when you look at IT in the modern thing, the one week it looks this way, the other week it looks something else. This is actually what's going in your mind when you want to start building stuff, right? It's not chaos, babies. It's a story, right? <laughs> Just a very complicated story with multiple <laughs> outcomes. It's not uh, very prescriptive, right? It's just a normal rule set that we have to work against. It's a game. It's really just a game. But this should be fun, right? 
this kind of fun. But there's one thing, one thing that's certain. Yeah. <laughs> it could hurt, right? So my, my background is that I've been, we've, we've just gone through 60 slides, by the way, just so you know. So um, I, I work for these guys. These guys are an open source company. I'm not there to punt them. Um, they've been doing open source for a while, right? So we're the oldest open source company in the country. So yeah, and we manage customers' infrastructure. Now this poses a very interesting thing. You think you have legacy, right? <laughs> you think so? Uh, Linux, uh, Linux <laughs> 15 years ago was a mess. Now with system D, it's something else, <laughs> right? So yeah, you think you have system D, true. So when we started to look at our journey of how are we gonna manage our infrastructure sets, uh, for the customers, it, it was it was a bit complicated, right? So we thought about this guy. Uh, this was four years ago, before Red Hat acquired them and ruined everything. Um, and then, um, <laughs> and when we started, it wasn't quite that mature. Um, it was very mature. Yeah, it was it was great. It was yeah. So, um, so, so before I start, because there is a few people in here, I don't want to hurt any feelings. You guys like Ansible, right? Because it's a nice deployment tool. Right, but we have a very interesting scenario. Right, the current Linux versions that we support for our customers at the moment is 18 versions of Linux on three different types of architectures. <laughs> Scope creep. Have you heard of this? Look at that. Look at that chart. That's just the 80. That, these are the legacies we support for customers. So we need to bring that in our DevOps lifecycle. Yeah, you try and dev for shit like that. <laughs> 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 And uh, roughly, this is 50% of the infrastructure that we manage that's already on the infrastructure. So there's 50% more that we need to add. So um, we manage everything through what they call SSH. So we have a SSH <laughs> config. I don't know if you've heard of that. So that's our SSH config today, right? <laughs> that we use to manage, yeah. Yeah, so, <laughs> so we... So when we try and teach ops people to work with YAML, right, it gets tough, right? There's, there's hell. YAML sucks, <laughs> sucks balls, people. <laughs> and other stuff. So yeah, so we had a strong infrastructure background, but the problem with Ansible is that we didn't need a product, we needed a framework. Thank you so much for that, Joe. Okay, thank you, you're so cool. So, it's a bromance. Mm. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we wanted to do infrastructure as code, but, yeah, but we needed to test everything, you know? And I could do all this, right? So, <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> this never happens, right? Liam Neeson didn't pick up the phone and say, hey, this is just a test, right? We needed some action. So our pipelines look something like this, <laughs> right? <laughs> test, 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 test. And the tools that we work on is um, um, we've, we've fairly heavily invested into the chef, chef way of th thinking about things. And it's not just chef tool. We're thinking about kitchen and the way that kitchen works. I don't know if any of you guys use kitchen for testing. So kitchen's very modular and robust. So that's a beautiful slide from the website. I don't know if you guys can make it a bit. That means contrast. If you didn't know, <laughs> but if you <laughs> okay, thank you, <laughs> thank you. Okay, so that's the contrast, right? So, kitchen generally relied always on Vagrant for use for your stuff for to to provision stuff, but it can also use as a virtualizer at the back. Virtualizer, I'm using that very roughly, uh, can be Docker or Windows or DigitalOcean or AWS or Google Compute. You're not just stuck to Vagrant. So that means when you start testing infrastructure, you can spin stuff up in a specific cloud environment. Also, Kitchen, and those nice people at, um, at Chef know this, is very modular. So you don't need to use Chef with your Kitchen. You can use uh, that puppet thing, and uh, Ansible, and obviously SaltStack. <laughs> um, <laughs> nobody uses that, right? Um, you know, it's so faded, you can't even see that. <laughs> again, again. <laughs> 
yeah, okay. It's coming. Okay, so cool. So, and then obviously you can test, you can spin up your machines on Cento. Yeah, you can have the machine types that you can spin up as CentOS, uh, Ubuntu, Windows, etc. And then obviously you have your tests that you run against this, which is very important. So, this is our part of our pipeline. This is a, this is a kitchen YAML file. So there at the top, you can see what virtualizer I use. So if I use AWS, I just change Vagrant to AWS and use my credentials for that. Very difficult. Unfortunately, this is YAML. <laughs> so it makes a bit. So uh, we're using a chef provisioner here. And we use a tool called Inspec for verification codes because Inspec is awesome, awesome, awesome. And then there at the bottom is the platforms that I test against and then the run list contains the recipes that I run on that. And then I have a test suite. But here I can test all these specific spin-ups. And this is vanilla spin-ups of vanilla machines. Roughly on my Mac, my MacBook Pro with 15 gigs of RAM with a cocky keyboard. Uh, clicky, I mean clicky. <laughs> um, and roughly in six minutes, I can spin up all those machines and run those tests. And then obviously, um, we've integrated it into some of our other pipelines. Here's a Vagrant file, I mean a kitchen file, using Vagrant with Ansible as the way of testing it. But look at that, that's such a small little file and you can actually spin up your stuff and write your tests and your compliance for that. So, so Inspec is another thing that I'm gonna quickly talk about. Who knows Inspec, right? Ach, Jelle. Google that man. Dundit for me. Dundit for me. It's a bit high school. When you go home, Google that for me, please. It's, it's such an amazing thing. And it's so amazing because it's pure open source. And um, so it's, Inspec is compliance as code, right? And this has helped me trying to like get the chaos at work under control because obviously we have to write tests that needs to work on lots of little different Linux. So we're, we're very happy that, um, that SSH hasn't changed in the last, well, it has changed from version one to two, RSA to DS, well, DSA to RSA. So it's changed a little bit over the last few years, but these are, these are basically how the tests look. Very simple. This is one for the bind utils package. So when you run something like netcat and netcat not found, this is a thing to test for netcat. So obviously because of consistency in Linux, great show, right? On Debian it has, it's called uh, DNS utils and um, on Red Hat it's called bind utils. But we want netcat, right? Just give me netcat. So uh, this is just a normal test for us to test whether these things are installed on machines. Here's another dumb test. Um, I don't know if, if you can read, but I don't know if you can figure out what this is supposed to test. Um, but yeah, it's supposed to, well, that would be nice. So I'm describing a specific port, port 22. Guess what? It should be listening. <laughs> right, so th these, these things are fairly, fairly flexible. So this is, a, this is an inspect test for stuff running in, in EC2, right? So I'm deploying a specific image. I'm using my SSH key and I'm testing my specific um, instance that I'm deploying. And then obviously here at the bottom, I'm creating a security group with the following rules in it. Well, I'm not creating a security group. I'm testing whether those rules are there. So you can have infrastructure tests, not just limited to VMs or physical machines, but you can have these tests run against cloud infrastructure. Is this specific user in this specific group? Is this firewall rule open? Because imagine this. You have this nice thing called automation, costs money, and you just push it out and then you expect things to happen, but you don't have a separate test suite to run against those things to make sure that things are actually working. So that's, that's just um, a little example of how you could do that. So you can go to the Inspect website, it's open source, and you can run this against Windows machines as well. Holy shit, who cares? Anyway, um, um, right, so bias. Bias, but yeah, luckily, luckily Microsoft's more open than Red Hat these days, right? Uh, put that in your pipe and smoke it. Uh, that's a smoking sign. Um, so, yeah, so these are the tests that you can run against your infrastructure. Time? One minute. Oh, Jesus, you can stretch time. Um, so, <laughs> get his number. He can, he can make worse mistakes better. Um, so yeah, so you can have these things run, and it runs over SSH or WinRM, and obviously you can integrate this with stuff. So 
There's other friends that we also use in our main pipeline, and it's our HashiCorp friends, right? So it's Vagrant and Terraform. Very hot. That Terraform makes me so hot, right? So it, it does. It does. It's really awesome, right? So our pipeline is um, we're using what they call the Jira. Jira. In Pretoria, we call it Jira, right? And we use Bamboo and we use Bitbucket. So what happens is with our code branches is we commit our code with the Bitbucket. It goes in bamboo, it spins up kitchen, and then provisions VMs. It runs all our code, so we've done pipelines, and then with inspect, it tests whether these things were successful or built as advertised, and then obviously tags releases when it's done. So these tools are so interchangeable and so amazing and open source, you don't have to like spend money to build these things. Well, obviously that license that costs money, but I'm sure you can do stuff like this with uh, GitLab and, and that that Jenkins thing? Anyway, nobody uses that. Anyway, so, so yeah. The cool thing is about these chef tools is that we, we came there for the tech, but we stayed for the community. So I maintain this beautiful page on our Confluence TM, right, where, where we have all these things that we logged uh, for them. So we currently have about 15 issues that's been opened, and usually we get our patches and stuff merged into master. Um, within 10 days, from a feature request on GitHub to master. Yella, that is fucking amazing. Anyway, <laughs> I've worked in open source now since 1999. My first job was a cook. <laughs> now I'm a chef. Huh. Anyway, um, <laughs> so yeah, so anyway. But the most important thing is that we've, we've learned that, um, that the community just works there. And it's such an amazing feeling to feel welcomed and not they don't talk down to you, they embrace you with open arms. And that's why we're like, yeah, we're pro chef and it's cool for us. Anyway, so thank you for me, for allowing you to listen for me to share my ideas to myself. <laughs> I'm having an existential crisis. So, um, <laughs> so thank you so much for your time and I hope you enjoy the rest of the day. <laughs>